Welcome back to Seduce Me. Still sick, but I'm gonna take a little mint to clear up my throat. Here we go. Poppin' pills! Oh, that's too many. Altoids. Curiously cool mints. You take two of those, chew them, it smell- it, sound it feels like you snorted a freaking mint, guys. Oh man, I love how I start my episodes. It's so great. Okay. Le leaving off, Diana left us in our bed after the lecture, blah blah blah. Before I could fight, however, I sank fully into the floor, fading into darkness and shutting my eyes. As I opened them, I felt my silk sheets around me, shooting my anxiety from the darkness that had pre previously surrounded me. But what the? Why did Diana bring me home? Was this an illusion? Was I being tricked? Something was going on. I sat up in bed, looking around me. I was indeed in my room. There was no mistake about that. Why? Diana is too strange. <laughs> Was this a game? Was this part of her plan to get the boys back? I was lost and confused more than ever, despite my, log my logic... <sighs> despite my logical thought, trying to piece the puzzle that Diana is together. The more I tried to solve her, the less I understood about the situation I was in. I was interrupted, however, by my door suddenly opening and revealing the boys of Damien's hand on the doorknob. Miss, what are you doing here? Skip at school! Aren't you supposed to be in school? Yeah. <clears throat> Fold my eyebrows and stared at Damien, asking him to answer their question through my thoughts. Diana sent her back here. She invaded her school and sent all the students back home. What is that bitch up to? Seriously! Diana's playing around for no reason! Maybe it's part of her plan. The boys continued to argue back and forth about Diana, fueling an almost jealous curiosity in me. Damien seemed to be too deep within the talking to notice my thoughts, for he didn't even stop talking alongside his brothers. Why was Diana after them? Why does she want to bring them back? What's so important about the boys that she would travel to the human world to get them? What was going on? I decided enough was enough. I needed answers. Hey! The boy stopped arguing, staring at me in surprise. I held my hands and fists in my lap, mustering the courage to continue to speak despite my abrupt shout. Why is Diana here? Why does she want to bring you all back? What exactly did you all run from? Why did you run from it? Jesus! Miss, we- Ah, ah, ah! Don't miss me! Please, I need to know what's going on. I won't be left out and talk about this. I can't even read. I want to know what I'm facing. The boys looked at each other hesitantly, unsure of what to reply. Finally, Sam pushed Damien towards bed, making him buckle and land on his knees with his torso over the edge of the mattress. Damien, do the thing. Do it, Damien, do it. The thing, what thing? Sam, you're not suggesting. Why not? She deserves to know everything, especially if Diana is targeting her. Sam's right. I guess we have no choice, then. I was getting confused. What's Damien about to do? Damien stood before climbing onto the bed with me, sitting across from me on his knees. We are going to show you everything. You have to trust me, okay? The minute you stop trusting me, the vision will stop. Vision? Just trust me. Okay, okay! to Damien and I'm sure what was going on, but I nodded. This was the only way to learn, and this was my chance to know. Damien gently placed his hands on each side of my head, gently pressing his thumbs into my skin above my eyebrows. I could only stare at Damien as his eyes began to glow gold and energy began to be, to be, to be both pulled out of my body and forced into my head. Within seconds, my vision went black once again. I was unsure of what Damien was doing, but soon shapes and textures slowly began to appear around me. I found myself sitting on a stone floor in the middle of what looked like a fancy throne room. Where am I? I looked down at my, at myself to stand, only to see my body translucent as a ghost. Whoa! I jumped up, inspecting my hands in sudden panic. I was see-through. Why? What was going on? How dare they try to <clears throat> negotiate with me? Do they not know whom they speak to? A gasp ran through, ran through, ran behind a. I gasped! Oh my god! What happened? And ran behind a nearby pillar away from the voice. The sound of his anger and words frightened every bone in my body, turning me into a frightened child. My lord, please calm yourself! My lord! Oh no! Calm? They're merely testing my resolve! I have more than half of a mind to send my greatest armies to take what should be mine! 
They are mere insects in the way of my kingdom's expansion. They merely asked for a marriage joining. So I'm to bow to them and share my land that I have so rightfully conquered? Oh, my lord. I peeked from behind the pillar to see a large demon covered in royal clothes, but buff enough to be a military commander. His rage practically emanated from his body as he growled at the servant. They are willing to give their land to you, sire. All they ask is for one of your sons to marry their daughter, whom I might add is as beautiful as can be. This is ridiculous! To suggest that I need their approval to take their land is beyond insanity. What makes them think I care about their precious daughter? Is he wearing pants? I, I guess. I, I don't know what those are. <laughs> Did I mention that she is a... Prodigy of our kind, sire. A prodigy? Yes, my lord. Yes. This succubus is a master of her skills in magic and mind manipulation. She is said to sway armies with a snap of her fingers, despite being as young as she is. Impossible! If only it were, sire. This succubus is dangerous, but would be a great asset to have should we agree to this arrangement. The only reason she cannot phase you, my lord, is because you are the strongest demon in the plains. Is this supposed to change my mind? <laughs> yes, my lord. You are doing a terrible job at convincing me. My apologies, sire. I was lost. I could tell that they were talking about Diana, but why? Father. Oh, you're so cute. I quickly turned my head to see another demon who looked like a mere child, staring at the demon commander on the throne. Father. Ah, uh, Raystrow. Oh, fucking hell. Have you finished your training? Yes, Father. Then what do you want? What do you want, boy? I want to be with my brothers the best of the day, Father. The demon commander walked to the young demon and gripped his hair, picking him up off the ground and forcing him up to look at the snarl. The young demon, however, looked unfazed. Huh. Arrogance. Why should I allow you to be with them? I should kill you for your lack of respect to me. Because I want to be with them, father. I could only stare as the young demon faced his father despite the massive difference between them. The young demon seemed weaker and easy to kill versus the demon commander. Why would his why would this man kill his son though? Was this commander that ruthless? However, I wasn't expecting him to laugh and release the young demon. <laughs> Good! Assertive even in the face of danger. That is why you are my favorite son. That is why you are a royal dick! Okay, you could tell the anger in my voice there. I can only stare wide at it as the commander placed his hand on the demon's shoulder. Very well. Go. Tomorrow, you will show me your training. The little demon grinned wildly before running off. I have a thought. I have a dream! Yes, my lord. How old is this daughter? As old as your fifth. Sire. So, Damien? Fuck! Do you believe this proposal is worth it? Yes, Sire. Tell those insects that they are safe for now. I will consider their offer. Sire, are you certain? Did I stutter? Now go! The demon servant quickly ran out, but as soon as he passed the pillar I was hiding behind, he along with the commander vanished into thin air. What the... What had happened? I didn't get the time to try to figure that out before a, a demon who looked around my age walked into the room reading a book. Is that- Raystrow, your nose is stuck in those books. Will you not lift your head up from them once in a while? That voice. I circled around the pillar to see a second demon leaning against another pillar and smirking at Raystrow. Are you supposed to be with your mother practicing the harpsichord? I am, but I had a feeling that you were in danger. In danger? What are you- ATTACK! All of a sudden, three shadows zipped through the room and slammed into Raystro, forcing him to fall to the ground and dropped his book. At the sight- as the sight cleared for me- <coughs> I got- <laughs> There were three other demons in the dog pile, with Raystro at the bottom. It's off! No way! You haven't had a break in months from those stupid books! It's time for PUNISHMENT! DEATH BY BROTHERHOOD! Best line ever! No more reading! Woo! <laughs> I told you that you were in danger. I suddenly knew who these demons were. It's the boys. 
Even in the demon world, the brotherly connection was astounding. They were merely younger versions of themselves. One of the demons, who I assumed was Matthew, grabbed the book from the floor and opened it, reading it mockingly. How can you read this, Raystero? It's all about war strategy. It's boring. I have to, Zakaro. Get off! Yeah, but, but. There's only one thing you need to know about strategy. Kill them all. Take no prisoners. You sound just like father. <laughs> I couldn't help but giggle. It was cute to see them acting childish with each other. <laughs> Eventually, James manages to push off his bro push his brothers off him and stand, brushing himself off. You all are reckless. At least we have fun. True. It's true. You haven't been with us in weeks. Don't you think it's time for a break? I'm sure father won't mind. But I have to. I know you want to, Ray Strow. Shut the fuck up, Damien! What, what is going on here? I shot my head to the voice of the commander, aged a little, staring at the boys with his arms across his chest. Damien quickly dashed off and hid behind Sam, peeking over his shoulder to see the large commander. Nothing is going on. We just passed by each other. Then why does your brother have your book? Uh oh. I was showing him what I was learning, father. The fu- did I just skip something? Return to your studies, Ray Stroud. The rest of you out of my sight. Do not disturb your brother again. The way people say that name, Ray Stroud. Eh. <clears throat> I could only stare as James gently took, took his book and, without looking at his brothers, returned to reading. The commander walked past the remaining brothers, growling at Sam and Damien before leaving the room. What was up with that? Don't worry about it. We'll find a way to get him back. I don't know. He's on a very tight leash. Hmm. Ezra, you're quiet. He's always what did you hear? quiet. He's going to a negotiation meeting. He's going to arrange a marriage. A marriage? For who? It must be for one of us. He hasn't decided who will marry her. It's a girl from a kingdom he wants to take over. But that's uncharacteristic of him. Usually he'd just attack with the army. Whatever the case is, one of us is getting married. I hope it isn't me. <laughs> Ew, marriage cuties! Uh. What about Ray Strau? He's the eldest. It would make sense, but having a succubus marrying one of us means that she'll be practically married to all of us. You sound very happy about that. Well, what should we do? Run away! Before the conversation could continue, the boys vanished into thin air, fading into different colored mist. They were replaced by an older Damien and Matthew sitting with each other in the middle of the throne room. Do you think we should? I remember the first episode, I couldn't even look at them because it was just so fucking funny. I really want to. I want to as well. Still, it'll be hard to convince Raystero since he's the one about to be married and he's the favorite. We don't know that, Zikeru. Maybe she's set to marry you. <laughs> No way! I don't want to get married! I don't think you'll have a problem with that baby face of yours. Sh shut up, Sam. Looked over to see Sam join the duo, crossing his arms and raising an eyebrow at his brothers. What are you two talking about? We got into contact with the human world again. Come on, Ezreal. You give humans too much attention. No way! You gotta listen! They apparently have stores and books and schools and stuff! So exciting! So what? It's full of humans who piss on each other for no reason. They're no better than the devil spawn. Nuh-uh! The one we were talking to wasn't like that! How do you know, Sekeru? Because I do! What is going on here? Uh. They want to go to the human world. The human world? You have world? a big mouth, Sam. Reisuro, think about it! You won't have to marry that girl and be the heir anymore! You could be with us, and we could make lives for ourselves in the new world! Now you're just talking nonsense. I vote that we do it. <laughs> then Eric comes out of nowhere. Huh? Oh, not you two. Think about it. This may be our chance to finally get away from this political nonsense we're stuck in. We may be nobles, but we're still our own beings. Preach it. <laughs> Ristrao is in. God damn it. What? Azrael! Whoa! So how do we get there? Are you kidding me? You don't even know how we'd get there. A simple spell should work, but it would require someone from the human world to help us get there. We can ask him! 
Oh, he'd definitely help us. I'm... I'm not so sure about... Reistral, aren't you tired of pleasing Father all of the time? I am, but... If you stay, you'll be married off and become ruler of Father's kingdom. You'll have no time for yourself or with us, and you'll be constantly at war with the other realms for power. You'll most likely turn into the spitting image of Father. <laughs> Terrifying thought, isn't it? What he's saying is, get your head out of your ass and let's go. If you don't say yes, I'll drag your princely ass with us. I don't care what that bastard of a father wants. Come on, Reistero! All right, let's do this. What's the plan? Couldn't believe what was happening. I was seeing the history of their lives before my eyes. There were nobles and James was the heir of the kingdom. The commander ruled. Even more so, he was going to be married to Diana. Ew. <clears throat> They sacrificed everything to leave and be together. They'd rather be free than remain in their noble roles. I started to feel a little jealous. They were able to leave while I was still expected to be what my father wanted me to be. <coughs> Sorry. How they were able to leave was uncertain still, but I knew I would learn in time. I closed my eyes and mentally asked Damien to end the vision. As soon as I asked, the world around me slowly vanished. I was brought back to the bedroom where I sat with my head and nestled in Damien's hands. My vision began to clear, letting me fully see the boys around me with all concerned faces. So, you now know exactly who we are. Diana's the girl you arranged to marry? Not anymore. Once we left, the arrangement was broken. With no sons to marry off, her dad couldn't go through with the marriage deal. If Diana is here for us, that means she's trying to save her kingdom from being attacked. That's not true. She wants to rule our kingdom. Having one of us will give her the right to our kingdom, as much as we'd have right over hers. So she's a gold digger! It's not a surprise, honestly. Well, with a kingdom like ours, what succubus wouldn't want to marry us for it? It all made sense. She wanted them so that she could finally take over an opposing kingdom. She knew that, despite her powers, she wouldn't be able to fight against her father. Their father. So she had to find another way in. That's manipulative. That manipulative bitch! Before I could continue, I felt my head suddenly get heavy and dizzy. I gripped my head, mewling under my breath. What the hey? I took too much. Uh, I I'm so sorry. Rest now. There's no need to do anything more today. The boy suddenly rushed over and helped me lay back down as my vision was painted in white polka dots. I need to sleep badly. Instantly, I closed my eyes and let the darkness consume me. After what seemed like hours, I finally woke up, slightly refreshed. My body knew that if I slept any longer, I'd be up all night. Which was not part of the plan of the day. I rubbed my eyes and sat up, letting a soft groan escape my lips. In response, something beside my bed shuffled, causing me to look over. <coughs> Sorry. I didn't know what I was expecting. Oh, the redhead! Beside me, sitting in the chair beside the bed, was Damien. Rousing himself up to see me awake, I smiled at him, seeing him slightly. Seem seeing his slightly ruffled hair and tired eyes. Oh, you're awake. <sighs> that, <laughs> How do you feel? Okay, that was a pure yawn. <sighs> Fine. Damien nodded before he looked down at the bed, taking my hands into I'm his. Sorry. This is all my fault. Uh. Damien, it's not your fault. No, it is. I was the one who wanted to come to the human world. I convinced the others to come with. If I never did that, we'd never have put you in danger like this. Ah, oh, you're right. <laughs> a cookie reached over and put my finger on his lip, stopping him from going any further. I don't want to hear anymore. Damien, don't okay. I wanted to help you out. I offered to let you let you all stay. <laughs> Nothing is your fault. I gently moved my hand and cupped Damien's cheek, staring at him with concern. I didn't want him to hold guilt in his mind about this whole ordeal. Diana was desperate and she'd hunt anyone for them. It wasn't his fault. She was desperate enough to hunt them down. One thing bothered me, though. Why did his dad scorn him? Why did Damien want to run away? The other seemed a little obvious, but a little obvious. But Damien was a mystery. However, before I could voc be vocally curious, however, wow, Damien, Je Diana, <laughs> Damien gently held my hand, head in his hand. Somebody help me, Damien. Damien frowned, simply held me. I'll show me. you everything. 
Damon let out a small laugh, a hint of depression lingering in the breath he let out before he focused his energy into my head. My vision blurred and suddenly I was back in the demon castle. I expect to see Damien wandering around the halls or with his brothers, her I found him alone sitting on the floor of the throne room, tearfully curled into a ball. The room smelt of blood, but my eyes couldn't look away from the tearful Damien. The fuck is go- Damien? I knew he couldn't hear me, but I instinctively called out to him. He looked lonely. Where was his brother? Why are you crying? Grandfather. Grandfather! <laughs> Damien picked his head up suddenly, as I did. Grandfather? Who are you? What do you want? I just want to know if you're okay. Who are you? Don't be afraid. I'm just a friend. Friend? I stared completely in shock. How- when did- my grandfather knew them? Everything started going in fast forward. I saw Damien talking to the voice of my grandfather, seeing his sad face go from happy to surprised to fascinated and cycle randomly. There were even moments when Matthew joined him, letting Damien speak for the voice in the air. It was unbelievable. Here my grandfather spoke of the human world, painting it to be a beautiful world full of opportunity. How did my grandfather know about all this? What was going on? My mind slightly spun at the idea that my grandfather delved into magic and demons. Eventually, the world around me slowed down to see the boys standing before an empty throne. They looked determined, stout, ready for something to happen. Damien stepped forward and held his hand out to the throne. Whoa! Whoa, well, that is a language! That is a language that I... Okay. My grandfather started to chant a f phrase unfamiliar to me, letting it rupture into the air around the boys. Gusts of wind started to brush through the room like a storm rushing in. I watched over a small tear tear opened in the air in front of the throne. It... it, it Internet Explorer, please. D not right now. Not right now, Internet Explorer! You are done! It glowed in unholy purple color, <coughs> peeking into a very familiar pink cafe. No way, that's... Quickly, Sam rushed over and drove his hand through the tear, pulling it open and making it large and revealing a pink the pink lady cafe with my grandfather on the other side. My grandfather held out his hand, ushering the boys to Hurry come. up, boys! I can't hold it open for long! Instantly, the boys ran through the tear, climbing through almost, climbing through and almost crashing into the tables and chairs of the cafe. I felt myself move through as well, joining them as my grandfather closed the portal. Ooh, ooh, pretty! Oh, it's so pink. You guys really don't fit in well in here. <laughs> the boys looked around the space, almost mystified at the sight. My grandfather laughed out of breath before sitting down at one of the nearby tables. There now. Welcome to the human world, boys. Let's see. Kay, make us some coffee, please. These boys need a drink. Second, wiping my nose. I turned to see Kay, the owner of the cafe, and the only person in the room besides the boys, smile and quickly get to work on making coffee. I was dumbfounded. She knew about them? I felt myself getting dizzy at the thought, but I shook my head I shook uh, shook my head out and shook my head out and tried to focus on what was going on. My grandfather looked at the boys up and down before chuckling again. The boys must have still been speechless. You'll need a spell to cover yourselves up. Humans don't exactly have horns or parade around naked. <laughs> the boys <laughs> looked at each other before collectively nodding and focusing their energies. Nice! Before my, uh, before my eyes, they went from demon to human-looking demons. They looked at each other, ecstatic in their looks. My grandfather, however, cleared his throat. My attention back to Now, me. don't be rude to Kay now. Sit and enjoy some coffee. It's the best in town. The boys obeyed, obviously in his debt. I looked at Damien's face. He was almost in tears of joy. I could tell that he was beyond happy to be in the human world. I almost felt like crying for him, but I couldn't understand why. Maybe it was his facial expression, or maybe it was because I would meet him soon after this fact. Wow. That was deep. I'm going to end it here, guys, because... I've been recording for two hours and I'm starving. I'll see you guys next time.